Let's go ahead and create the aggregate demand curve from the aggregate expenditure model that we've already seen. I've stacked two two-dimensional graphs on top of each other. And that's for a very important reason that we'll get to in a second. Up on the top, we have the aggregate expenditure model, which is showing the relationship between aggregate expenditure and real GDP. Down here, we're going to create the aggregate demand curve. Aggregate demand is a relationship between the price level and real GDP. Notice the horizontal axes are measuring the exact same thing. The reason why we're doing that is so a point here, which we know is some level Y, we'll call this Y sub A to associate with point A, is the same point as Y sub A down here. This is going to be interesting because what we're going to do is we're going to change the price level to figure out what the shape of the aggregate demand curve is. Because aggregate demand is showing that relationship between real GDP and the price level. Let's assume that this level of aggregate expenditure is associated with some price level A. Whatever that price level may be, because remember, price level impacts autonomous spending through both consumption, investment, and net exports. Let's just go ahead and pick some level P sub A right here. What this is telling me is this price level, which is just an arbitrary price level that we picked, creates this aggregate expenditure line, which has this level of output. So here's a combination of price and output that are related. This right here is a single point along our aggregate demand curve. What we're going to do is we're going to create a couple more points to show how aggregate demand is shaped. Let's go ahead and look at the price increasing. Let's assume we have a price level here. That's P sub B. Well, what do we know what happens if the price level increases? If prices go up, we know that we see consumption, investment, and net exports go down. We see that autonomous spending decreases when prices go up. So it may fall somewhere down here. This is going to be a different level of autonomous spending. Decrease that way. I'm going to try and make this as neat as possible. So I'm going to try and get a straight edge here. And let's go ahead and see what happens. What we're saying is this increase in the price level is going to lead us to a lower level of aggregate expenditure P sub B. I have a different level of equilibrium real GDP. So again, I go down here. This is that same level of real GDP. This is that level of the price. And so we have this point B is related to that point B. When the price level increases, aggregate expenditure decreases, holding all else constant, which means that GDP is decreasing. We can do this another way. And the way that we're going to do that is by decreasing the price, P sub C. Well, the same type of idea, only in reverse, a lower price is going to increase autonomous spending, let's say up to here. And an increase in autonomous spending will increase aggregate expenditure. We'll get the straight edge again, try and make these as parallel as possible. We know that this increase in autonomous spending will increase aggregate expenditure. So this is the level of aggregate expenditure that's associated with this price level C. We get a new level of equilibrium GDP. We get a new level of GDP down here. So we have a new combination. We have some level of price that's associated with a new level of real GDP. Again, a change in the price level changes that autonomous spending, so aggregate expenditure changes, creating a new level of overall GDP. What does this tell us about aggregate demand? Because aggregate demand is that relationship between the price level and real GDP. We can see as we connect these, we are going to get a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. So that's how we get the aggregate demand curve. It's how we graph the aggregate demand curve, how we create the aggregate demand curve by looking at our aggregate expenditure model that we've already created.